Okay, in this video we're going to talk about a Schmidt trigger oscillator. Okay, a Schmidt trigger oscillator is uh, based on a uh, in logic inverter, usually CMOS because of the equal output impedances which give us a, gives us a good close to 50% duty cycle. But it's based on this CMOS uh, inverter that typically has a Schmidt trigger input. So uh, in order to understand that we need to talk a little bit about what a Schmidt trigger is. A Schmidt trigger input is uh, an input whose uh, input logic threshold is bistable, uh, meaning that it changes to one of two values depending on what the internal logic state is. And it's really useful for you know cleaning up the logic switching on you know, maybe slowly changing or noisy inputs, uh, and also really good for oscillators. So let's talk about how it works. Uh, so let's consider um, this as an input to our logic circuit and it might be coming from a sensor or something like that, it could be changing very slowly, might have some noise on it. If we just had a single logic threshold like this dashed line here in the middle, what, we, what may happen is that signal comes through that threshold, a little bit of bouncing on that signal above or below that threshold might cause the logic state to chatter between high and low or true and false. Uh, and then similarly when we come back down in the other direction we might you know, chatter as we cross through that, that single threshold. So what the Schmidt trigger does, it has a logic threshold that changes. So let's say if the logic state is false, like it is here, the signal will have to come up through this upper threshold here. Once it does that, and the logic state changes, say, from false to true or zero to one, as soon as that state changes, the logic threshold moves from here down to here. So that even if we have a little bit of noise here, as soon as we crossed it once, that threshold moves down to here. So any little noise or wiggle that happens here does not cause any further changes in the logic state. Hence, we get no chatter. And then in order for the state to change, that voltage would have to come back down through that lower threshold, and the same thing applies. Once we cross through that threshold once, the logic state changes, the threshold moves, and we get a nice clean transition. So this is kind of what our logic state would look like. Okay, when we cross through this, rather than chattering potentially here uh, and here. Uh, if we have a Schmidt trigger type input on an inverter, the output of the inverter would just be opposite of this voltage. Okay, so that uh, when our input was low, the output would be high until we cross this upper threshold, and the output goes low, and vice versa. So that's how that's what will happen essentially in the oscillator. So let's see how the oscillator works. Okay. This is typically what the voltages look like. If this is our logic output, okay, from the inverter, uh, when the output of the inverter is low, then um, this resistor is going to be pulling down and pulling charge off this capacitor, discharging that capacitor. So this is the other input. So when that input then crosses down through this lower threshold, then the output state of the inverter changes, okay, and the threshold moves up. Now, with this output going high, we're going to now charge up that capacitor through this resistor. So we get an RC charge through here, okay, until we hit the upper threshold and the output changes state and the process repeats itself. So that's typically how the uh, oscillator works. And uh, typically, uh, you know, we'll use again a CMOS device because we want kind of the output impedance during the high and low to be about equal so that we can get a close to 50% duty cycle. So real common devices to use are like a 74 series, and this could be MC74, could be you know, SN74, different manufacturers will have different prefixes. The middle letters, usually if it includes a C, means it's a CMOS compatible device or CMOS device. Um, and then uh, there's different ones, like there could be just a 74C14, which just be a CMOS version of that. An HC is a high speed CMOS, is a little bit faster. The AC is, a, is faster yet, has a pretty fast edge speed, it's about 2 nanoseconds or so. Okay, So these are common devices to use for this oscillator. The frequency of the output is kind of approximated by some factor X divided by the product of R and C. And X is usually between 1 and 2. Uh, and the reason I, you know, we have to kind of, we can't really narrow it any, down any better than this is that it's going to depend on the particular logic family you're using. It's going to depend maybe on the particular device, what those logic thresholds are for those high and low thresholds, and even what power supply voltage you're using. Because uh, that's going to determine you know, what voltages are going to be applied you know, at the output to charge and discharge that capacitor. 
So, you know, it's pretty common for it to be anywhere between like 1.2 and 1.8 or 1.9. So you'll have to play with it with some values to get uh, your, the frequency set on yours. So let's take a look at what these look like in real life here. Okay, I've got a, uh, I've got one of these oscillators built up here. There's a little bit more on this circuit that we're going to talk about in the next video here. But uh, the oscillator is based, this is a 74AC14. Uh, uh, it's a 14 bin dip uh, sitting in here. And um, the, this resistor standing up vertically here, okay, and that capacitor, okay, I think it's a 6.8K resistor and a 47 nanofarad capacitor. They're basically this R and C. And I'm probing on either side of this resistor. So I'm really probing the output and the input. And if we look at those on the scope up here, okay, uh, this is the output. I've just got it on a 5 volt scale here, so it's uh, you just see just the logic output going high or low. And then this is the, the voltage at the input. Okay, that's on a 1 volt per division scale. So I can see I've got about 1 volt or so uh, of difference between the logic threshold, for the high and the low thresholds. And we can see when that output is high, we're charging up that capacitor until it reaches that upper threshold. When the output goes low, then the output then goes low. That causes then the capacitor to get discharged, okay, and charged and discharged, and that's essentially what makes the oscillator. So, uh, so that's how a Schmidt trigger oscillator works. Now, I built this up uh, for a, a specific purpose uh, to basically make a very easy and simple uh, cable test tester, a, t a time domain reflectometer. And if you're interested in that, stay tuned for the next video. And thanks for watching.